Greetings once again, Indie Warriors! Welcome back to I Dream of Indie, your number one source for indie game reviews and previews. My name's Old Gamer Joe, and if it's your first time here on the channel, do consider hitting that subscribe button below, along with the bell notification so that you don't miss a single drop of indie gaming goodness. Today we are reviewing Ruinverse on the Nintendo Switch. This JRPG is developed by EXE Create and published by Chemco. You can currently grab Ruinverse at a bit of a discount for $13.49 at the time of this review. It's normally priced at $14.99 here in North America. Ruinverse puts you in control of lead character Kit, a transporter, alongside his childhood friend Allie. The two set out on a hunting expedition when they come across a strange monument that scrambles poor Allie's memories. Unable to remember Kit now, or much of anything really, she's brought to a traveling physician, I guess you could say, named Lexor, where it's discovered that Allie has two souls within one body, both of which are independent of one another. From this point on, Allie can become Alvin, and from here, a greater adventure is set off involving even more party members, some villainous foes to take down, and you know, a lot of what you would expect in a 30 hour or so JRPG. The cast of characters in Ruinverse is mostly entertaining, I would say. There are some decent dialogue interactions going on here. I wouldn't say the writing is phenomenal by any means, but I was mostly entertained. From Lexar's bizarre obsession with wanting to literally open people up to examine their insides, to a pouty bandit named Toto who can read ancient scripture but really just wants to rob the party, I honestly did grow to like this unlikely group of heroes. Some of the interactions, especially between Kit and Ali, are quite entertaining as she starts to shift between Allie and Alvin, you will get some laugh out loud moments. Gameplay wise, Ruinverse is a very conventional JRPG. There's not too many surprises here. You have pretty much everything fans of this genre would expect from towns to explore, an overworld map, and of course, random encounters. For me personally, though, it was the turn based combat system in Ruinverse that I found to be the most entertaining aspect. You can have up to five combatants in these battles, and you have a bar at the top of the screen which indicates a party member's turn order. You can choose between guarding, using an item such as restorative potions, attacking, or using one of the many skills available to your different party members. There are certain elemental advantages to be aware of, and you'll also want to be careful using the skills you have because this does come with a cost known as a rebound. This rebound determines how long it will be before you can take your next turn. You'll also earn skill points in battles which can then be spent on the game's skill tree in order to upgrade characters' physical, magical, and passive skills. This skill tree is surprisingly expansive, and you'll also gain tons of treasure throughout the various dungeons, most of which can be equipped. Ruinverse does a pretty good job of simplifying things. You have an auto-equip feature and different difficulty options as well. You can even turn on auto battle during these encounters if you so wish, though I don't always recommend it because you'll basically just do an endless onslaught of attacks and it can get you killed depending on the situation. So yeah, Ruinverse is a game that you can make as easy or difficult as you wish thanks to the different difficulty options, and getting around is fairly easy as the game features a rather linear set path, and Ali can eventually even teleport at times. As a fan of JRPGs in general, I thought Ruinverse successfully scratched the itch in a lot of ways. The combat is simple but effective, I love having an overworld map to explore, and the character interactions as I mentioned earlier kept me pushing forward. So if you don't go into Ruinverse expecting the next Final Fantasy, you'll probably end up getting a little bit drawn into the game if you're anything like Old Gamer Joe. Graphically, Ruinverse, it's alright, a little bit of a mixed bag. While you're exploring the game's various towns and dungeons, it does have that RPG maker look to it that isn't anything special, but the characters do look decent and I was able to read their emotions well enough. The portrait art featured is actually quite good too, I would say, and I think the turn-based battles actually look halfway decent as well. Expect plenty of palette swapped enemies here, but despite that, there is a good enemy variety. The overworld looks alright, so yeah, the 16-bit aesthetic, it's serviceable, more or less what you would expect out of a classic JRPG, and the same could be said about the soundtrack. Heroic sweeping melodies and high energy battle themes are littered about this adventure, and the 16-bit inspired sound effects also serve the purpose. It's a decent, if unoriginal, soundtrack, which kind of sums up my feelings on Ruinverse in general. Look, honestly, I hadn't played a lot of Kempco games before starting this channel, but I'm glad I've been able to now because they know what they're doing. They've made a JRPG on a budget, and that's more or less what you should expect. I think when you consider the price, Ruinverse isn't that bad of a game, actually. Again, don't expect a classic here, but if you do have that itch for a JRPG and your library is running a little bit thin, you'll get some pretty fun turn-based combat, some entertaining characters and writing, and a halfway decent visual and audio presentation. Sure, there are better options out there, but Ruinverse still serves as a nice diversion if you're looking to add a new JRPG to that Switch library. The ability to play it on the go is a plus too, of course, as the game ran just fine either docked or in handheld mode. So go into Ruinverse with a good understanding of what it is, a budget JRPG, and you might actually end up surprised with how much fun you're having. Having.
We would now like to take a quick moment to thank our great indie warriors who support us through channel memberships. Mitchell Hall, Kevalo Bunny, Bill Tikaz, Christian Cruz, Wesley William Semple, Kimberly H, Rosie Syntax, Chris Jackson. Thank you for supporting I Dream of Indie. It really does help us bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming. Everybody else should head down to the description box below where there are a ton of ways to support us. However you end up doing so, it means the world. We thank you so much.